Okay folks, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is you're watching this video. Uh, so this is a new video that me, Brian and Andy are going to bring to you. We are building, oh, didn't see that tree. Um, we're going to be building a bushcraft base camp. There's Andy there, say hello Andy. Hello. And um, Brian is just over there, lurking in the woods. Okay. If he ducks down you'll see him, give us a wave. Okay. So this is going to be our little bushcraft base camp. Because the kids basically told us enough's enough, get out of ours. So we've had to find our own location uh, and I think we've stumbled across a nice location on the permission we've got. It's got nice running, little running stream through it. So as long as we've got our Soya Mini water filter, uh, which I always carry anyway and the lads have got their own filtration devices, um, we should be fine. Um, got running water. What we're looking at now is we're just going to build a fire pit just here um, and then we're going to put i'll just squeeze past these we're going to build a nice fire pit just there where the lads are uh, and then there's going to be a small bushcraft shelter here with some sort of raised bed moving across there'll be another shelter there raised bed and then another shelter just across there on an angle with a raised bed so this is part one of the bushcraft bushcraft base camp um so i hope you like this video um hopefully our camp will progress all it is especially in the winter we can't get the 4v4 down to the location where we were going to camp so what we want to do is build a base camp so we have less equipment to take with us don't need to bring a tent all the time, a tarp, a hammock, if we've already got a raised bed. All we need is our inflatable mats or our roll mats. And then we've had a good idea with this section. So we don't want to be cutting no, no live trees. What we're going to do is um, cut some dead branches over the top. Leaves and dead fall on it um, to make some sort of roof. It is quite sheltered anyway. And then we're going to keep our wood storage for when we're making fires underneath this section so hopefully it should be good we're new to shelter building um we're quite new to shelter building as i say we're quite new to bushcraft we've only been doing it a couple of years so um if you've got any tips or any advice for when we are building our shelters just drop us a comment uh, or any links to any videos if you want to drop them in the comments as well that would be great for us to watch um, so I'll bring you along for the ride and I'll bring you back in a second when we start off digging the hole for the fire pit Okay, so as you can see now Andy's just using his entrenchment tool that he got for £3 when we had the bushcraft show in your hand So yeah, we're just gonna start digging the fire pit here uh, As Brownie was saying before, what did you say? Put stones in the bottom? Yeah, line the bottom stones just retains the heat a lot more Especially yeah. when you're cooking so if the fire goes out we can still cook off the stones heat so there you go once the fire goes out the rocks will retain the heat to help with cooking uh, Brownie learned this trick when he was in the army um, and done a couple of tours of Afghan so it's tried it's tested so we're going to give it a go um, and I will get stuck in in a sec I'm not just going to stand here and watch Andy working uh, as much as being the foreman that I am I still like to get hands on people ok so I'll bring you back soon <laughs> Hands on people. <laughs> not not in a creepy hands on people way, just like hands on with the work. Come across wrong that. Okay. Andy likes me to get hands on but I don't like touching him. Okay, bring you back soon. Okay, so as you can see now, Andy's just digging the fire pit. We'll spread that soil around so it doesn't just look like a big mound, it's going to be spread out. Uh, we're going to line it with these rocks and then build the rocks up around it. At the minute I'm just cutting wood now into the straightest pieces I can because I'm going to build a windshield basically where Andy's sitting so when it will reflect the heat from the fire 
uh, back towards the shelters we're going to be building. The idea is we're building a fire pit now so we can still cook and have heat down here in the winter while we're going to be working here. Uh, what are you making, Brownie? Salad. Straight up for your uh, windshield. Windshield, so Brownie's on the same as me, just doing the windshield. But what, as I said before, it's really good now having the stream running along here. So we've all got water purification devices. Um, so we don't need to bring water down with us. We've got running water, which is really good. We've just got to make sure we check it upstream. There's no dead sheep or no dead animals or anything like that upstream. Okay, so I'll bring us back in a little while. I hope you're enjoying this video. And this is going to be Panda's Bushcraft Camp. Yeah, and he's just been told off by Brownie. Yeah, he hasn't. <laughs> Basically. Which, the best quality of Brownie is if you're going to do something, do it right. Me and Andy are kind of, that'll do guys. But with Andy, with Brownie, sorry, he does a proper job. So basically, he's like Andy from laying the patio in the, um, the fire. And he's taking over. Which, one of Brownie's really good qualities is, he does a good job. With me and Andy do, that'll do, we'll get fed. But, you know, Brownie the Builder there is smashing life. So, as I say, daily rate is about 90 quid a day. You can lay your patios, you can build your fire pits in the back garden. Uh, if you try and help him, he'll just tell you to piss off. Um, so, pretty much, if you need him, I'll leave his Instagram. Link in the bottom of this video. Brownie indoors. Spends most of his time outdoors, but he couldn't spell out, so we put in. Um, so, I'll bring you back in a little while, so we just can have a look of what we've built. We have got a time lapse going, so I'll probably put bits of this in from the time lapse as well. So, bring you back soon. Okay, so all jokes aside, um, if you can see what Brownie's doing now, he's just neatening it off. So, we can put rocks in the bottom. One, this protects the soil underneath, and two, it retains the heat. So... When you're cooking, it'll keep the heat in for longer. The, Basically, the soil will drag the heat out. Whenever you have like a fire, the ground pulls the heat out of the fire. The... And it like dissipates. So this is one of the methods that Brani used uh, to stay warm and that when they were on tour in Afghan. Um, so it's tried, it's tested and it worked. But what we've decided to do with this fire, something a little bit different, if you can see here, we've dug a bigger pit, this is like your fire pit. And then just next to it, this is going to be where we knock the coals into or the embers into. And we're going to have a grate over that for cooking. So we could still have a fire going here for the Dutch oven or to keep warm. And then to cook your steaks, your whatever, can be done over a grill. Uh, over hot coals, that side. So I think it's something a little bit different uh, that we want to try out. The soil, what we've decided to do with that, when we build the windbreaker or the... The reflector so it bounces the heat back into us we're just going to build up behind the the wall that we're going to make here to give it a bit more rigidity so it doesn't blow over in the wind okay so i hope you're enjoying this video it's a bit new to us we've never built a bushcraft camp before um so hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of us down here staying in the elements instead of in tents and stuff um, like so that so what me and andy are making now if you can just see on the floor just there we're going to be making the stakes that are going to hold the windbreaker at the back to hold the all these sticks in place. If you can just see, yeah, all these sticks in place there, they're going to hold them in. So me and Andy are making the stakes for it now. So if you watch what Andy's doing, he's just... What are you doing there, Andy? Are you making the spike end or are you making a bit of... Uh... Spike end. Okay, so Andy's making this into a spike so when we knock it into the ground it goes in nice and easy but then on the other hand if i just slip over the other hand and they'll just shave off just around the edges so when we when we're battening it in the wood doesn't split so this end will be a nice sharp pointy end like what buffy the vampire slayer used to stab vampires with um, and then on that end it's going to be rounded off to so it's easier to go in the ground and doesn't split the wood um, and Brownie there is just finishing off and uh, putting the rest of the rocks in so it'll keep the heat in when we're cooking. So it's a bit of a, not going to be a quick video. Uh, hopefully I'll try and keep it as short and sweet as I can. But we want to get this nice, a nice fire pit. So when we're down here through winter, building the camp, 
Um, it's a nice place we can cook, stay warm in the winter, uh, and we should have all the uh, right gear down here to cook with so we don't have to keep carrying all our stuff down with us. So we'll probably keep make some sort of place to hide a grill to put over the fire uh, and a few cooking items and stuff like that so we don't have to always carry them down with us. Uh, it's not so bad in the summer because we can get the, the four wheel drive down here. Um, but in the winter, we don't really want to damage the grass or damage the, the hills or anything like that with the jeeps getting stuck trying to drive up them putting big tire tracks in them so if we build a camp it's less gear to bring down with us um, and what they say is the more knowledge you have the less gear you need so that's what we're doing we're practicing now learning these skills so we won't need to always bring a ton of stuff with us because we know how to do certain things uh, our axe work will get better working down at the bushcraft camp as well, our knife skills uh, and just basic survival knowledge will get a little bit better. So as I say, I hope you're enjoying these videos and I'm glad to have you along for the ride. Okay, bring us back soon. tips for me on better ways of doing this I'd love to hear as I say I'm new and I'm bringing you along for the journey but all I'm trying to do is put a bit of a point in the bottom of this stick just so it's easier to batten into the ground in a sec eh, when we're building our firewall so I'm using brownie's axe um, it's a lot smaller than mine mine's good for splitting and most camp tasks but when you're doing smaller intricate work like this it's a little bit heavy so I'm just using Brownie's axe um, he's had this for a long time he uh, looks after it a lot so that's why it looks quite clean and tidy but he really does look after his tools so just pinched his axe a second just while he's putting the stones in the fire pit so as you can see that's the type of thing we are going for just a nice point like that I'll probably just finish that off now with my knife and then I will, as I said what Andy was doing before, just round the edges off. Just so when we are batting them down in a sec with a stick, it'll go straight into the ground, nice and easy. Okay, so I'll bring you back when we're out to build the wall, the windbreaker. I'll bring you back when we're doing that. Okay, so, quick update. If you can see, just in there, Brownie's put all the rocks. I will show you the better close-up of it in a second. So Brownie's put all the rocks in now. Wood's all cut, ready to go on, but we're just going to stop now and have a little bite to eat. But while we're making the fire pit, we brought down the Ridge Monkey barbecue just to give it a test out. We've got the hot plate for it now, so I'm going to use the hot plate on the Ridge Monkey barbecue, as you can see. Nice day, considering it's October, the sun's out, it's quite warm, we're all in t-shirts. Uh, so I'll bring you back in a second uh, and give you a tour of what we've done. Okay, so if you can just see in there, okay, that is all rocks, okay, so they're all rocks just to keep the heat in, and they come out of the stream just over there, so we've got a few more rocks there that we're going to put around the edge of the fire as well, just to contain the fire a bit more, and then we will be putting a fire heat shield just in the back there to bounce the heat back to us, like I said before, so as you can see, the camp's starting to take shape a little bit, and the fire pit's looking good. And while Brownie was doing that, me and Andy had a good clear up of most of the big dead fallen. Okay, so as you can see, this is the start of the wall. In a little bit more, mate. Bring this side in, that's it, perfect. Okay, so this is the start of the fire deflector we're going to do. Um, we've cut the legs basically quite high. Uh, just in case we ever want to add to it or something like that. Uh, I'd rather have a bit more height um, than have to redo the sticks again. Uh, and as well, we can also hang things things off it. And so it is really starting to take shape now. As I say, it looks like I'm not doing much, but every time I get the camera out, I'm filming. So um, 
I am actually helping. Uh, we've got the barbecue on the go there, doing a bit of food. Do not try and kill us, Andy. Can't guarantee it. Yeah. Okay, Andy's terrible at cooking. Always tries to poison me and Brownie. So, um, as you can see, it's looking good. So I'll bring you back on the finishing touches. So what we do is we'll have a leg this side and a leg this side, and then we'll tie it together at the top, and it'll close it all in, uh, nice and tight. We have just rounded the edges off of the stick with a blade, just so when we're battening down, it doesn't split the wood. Okay, so if you were battening it down without it chamfered at the edges, it'd split. So that's why we do that. Okay, so okay, so we'll bring you back once the wall's all erect, and you can have a little look at it. Uh, and as I say, comment or put links in the comments for videos of other people doing this we'd like to watch and see other people's base camps and see how they're doing it okay see you soon okay so just as brownie was doing before just gonna go over it i'm not just doing this because it looks like i've done absolutely nothing all day which i have stop laughing right it's not even <laughs> funny pair of knobs okay so if you get the gist of this now i'm gonna hammer this one in we're gonna fill this up with sticks tie the top of them together to pinch it together like that that'll give us a nice wind break and it will bounce the heat back into the shelters that we are going to build just over there as you can see brownie has done a top job of lining the bottom with rocks and we put rocks all the way around it to just stop any embers or heat uh, escaping onto the ground maybe catching fire in the summer to some dry leaves won't spread okay so we have dug it down because we are under the tree line we don't want the trees catching that's why we've dug so far down just to make sure we're safe and we keep the the woodland safe just always remember to be respectful of the area you're in don't take the piss when we went to another, a campsite in wales there was people digging fire pits leaving shit all on the floor all rubbish and stuff like that even though this is a, a permanent permission for us we still won't be leaving no rubbish when we go the end of the weekend or the end of the overnighter we take all our rubbish with us so that's why if you can see now when we leave it's going to be nice and clean but I'll bring you back to this, so as I say, I'm just going to hammer this in. Okay, realistically, you'd want another piece of wood to do, to be batting these down. But unfortunately, most of the wood that is batting in size that we've got, will be getting made to do this. Anything a bit bigger that's deadfall is unfortunately really rotted. So next time we're down, I'm going to show you how to make a bushcraft mallet. So on the next one of the next videos we'll make a bushcraft mallet that we can just hang on the tree for when we're building. So at the moment I've got Brownie's axe, his permission. I put the sheath on it. Some people say take it off because when you're battening it can come through. Me and Brownie both personally think if you keep it on, it's protecting you. If you have a mishap and slip, all you're getting hit with is a leather sheath instead of a sharp axe. Always be safe when you're out. As well, when you're out and about, bring your first aid kit with you. Especially if you're using bits of axes, knives, stuff like that. Just always make sure you're safe in the woods. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on battening this down. I think this stick is a bit longer than the others, but I should be able to get it near enough level. Okay, if Brownie just wants to come over. As you can see, when I was making this stick, I'd done a bit of a shit job. I just chamfering the edges the way it's starting to split i've done a much better job here on a much better job on this one but i will get it in but when you're doing it make sure you take a nice bit off smooth it all off so when you're all battening down it doesn't break as you can see it's just starting to break a little bit there so I'll give it one more whack in and then i'll leave it at that otherwise i could potentially break that and need to start all over again As I say, I'm no expert, I'm pretty new to bushcraft. I'm just bringing news along for the journey. This is just what we've read in books and what we've seen on YouTube, other YouTube videos. I will leave some links to other YouTubers. So if anyone who's watching this because they know me and they want to get more into bushcraft, drop us a DM on Instagram or drop a message in the comments and I'll give you some links to some other YouTubers. You've got TA Outdoors, you've got Kent Survival, People like that, they're a lot better at this than me. 
uh, Lundy's Wild Camping on Bushcraft. He's really good, dead down to earth guy. Uh, he's from Newcastle ways, I think. Don't quote me on that, I might be wrong. But he knows his stuff, so I'll leave his link in the description for you as well. Okay, so I'll bring us back soon. Okay, so Andy's just gonna start that again. Okay, so as you can see now, Andy's just cutting off some paracord. Uh, just to tie the, the stakes, the legs, if you want, of the fly de deflected in place. Nothing fancy, he's just doing like an overhand shoelace knot basically, um, just to keep it all nice and tight. Quick release if we ever want to take it down. But it's going to hold it in place nice and easy. We will cut off the little tag end just to make it look a little bit neater. But as you can see, the fire pit is took shape. Well, a couple of hours work. Um, we've managed to tidy the camp a bit, dig a nice substantial fire pit, all rock lined at the bottom. As you can see, it's got all rocks around the edges just to keep the fire in. And we've built a windbreaker. So, I think it's going to be a nice little camp this. What we're going to do now is just have a little fire in it and just test it out before we head on home. So I'll bring you back when we get the fire started. So, as you can see, I just went off there to try and get some silver birch bark. Persistence paid off, Brownie got it going. That was just with shavings of fatwood. That, and when we went to a camp out a few weeks ago, a guy had a lot of it and he gave me some pieces and Andy a nice big piece. So, just shows you you can get it going with persistence, feather rod, a knife, and a nice bit of fatwood. Okay. So we're just going to test out the fire pit now as we're packing the rest of our kit up, give it a little burn and see how it goes and burn some of the dead dead wood that's no use in an ornament to us. Okay, so we'll bring you back in a second. Okay, so today, as you've seen, we've been down, we've had our first attempt at making our fire pit. Uh, if you can just see, just in there, I hope it's on camera. Um, our fire pit and the start of our bushcraft base camp so this is what we're going to build over the winter so ready one for summer and two we can't as i say bring the vehicle down here during the winter so we'll be yomping in on foot so we want to have as much 
stuff built out of natural materials as we can and then we can leave stuff like cooking utensils stuff like that hidden in in the trees in in containers and stuff like that so we don't always have to bring it in so this is episode one of the panda base camp um it's not just my camp obviously it's brownies and andy's as well but they don't have a youtube channel only i do so it'll all be filmed on this um andy will be helping out all the time as well as brani brani done some really good job getting that fire lit as you can see in the video none of us brought fire lighting kit with us so we had to make do with what we had i got a bit annoyed and had to have a mini when i come back brani had got it lit just by using a bit of fire uh, fat wood shavings a feather rod and a knife so it just shows you if you're persistent you can get it done but if you're like me bit short tempered have a minute walk away come back and you'll probably get it done anyway or go and get yourself a brownie and he'll have it done for you um <laughs> think he was the star of the show wouldn't you you know what i mean it's all about brownie okay uh, so i hope you like this video again if you're liking the videos give us a like a subscribe and click the notification button when videos come out i'm bringing you along for our learning journey we're learning this stuff as we go along we all know bits of basics i was in the ta for a few years and was always into camp, wild camping and camping. Andy was a scout leader when he was a lot younger eh, and always been into wild camping. And Brani was in the military. He'd done two tours of Afghan. Um, so he's done field craft, eh, a bit more in depth than what I've done. So that's how we know to light the fire. So again, give us a like, a subscribe, and click that notification button. And as well, I hope to see you outdoors sometime. Take care now.